Okay, Professor Ben, thank you to everyone. And third, uh, can you see me? Uh, can you see the presentation? And okay, uh, the presentation is named a uh, load testing of the deteriorated frustration criteria to breed a uh, bridge, uh, excuse me, without plants. Um, uh, this is uh, the overview of the presentation, uh, the statement of the problem, the description of the structure under study, uh, the results obtained, and some conclusions. Um, as an introduction, in 2015, a, an inventory performed by the University of the, of the Valle and the Cali City Hall uh, showed the quantity, the type, and the structural material of the city bridge. Uh, it also uh, showed that the, most of the bridge didn't have a design plans and that uh, some existing structures has a significant construction uh, deficiencies. Uh, this is the case of the structure under study. Uh, as you can see in the figure, the transverse beams are not aligned, uh, which uh, generate doubts uh, about their structural performance. Uh, all this evidence uh, leads us to state the following questions. Uh, what is the design law of the superstructure? Because we don't have uh, any plans or any calculations. Uh, the second question is, which elements contribute to the stiffness of the structural system? Uh, that why, uh, that's why the, the doubt about the uh, transversal beams. And how light load this is distributed on the bridge girders? Um, and two more questions. Uh, the first one, how do the different levels of experimental information contribute to improve the estimation of the bridge uh, response? Um, uh, this question is included uh, for purposes of my doctoral research when the reduction of the obtaining is uh, in the evaluation of the bridges is investigated based on different levels of design or experimental information. And the last one question, uh, should the structure have suffered damage in the service stage? Uh, these questions arise from the uh, deep uh, visualization performed on the structure. Mm, as, a as a historical uh, overview, uh, the design breed in Colombia is marked by three phases. Uh, the first, uh, where uh, the, mm, we don't have, a, we haven't mm, local design code, and the designers uh, work with the specifications from Ashto uh, until 1984. Mm, the second stage, where uh, appears the first edition of the local. Mm, design code called uh, the CCP 95, and this is based on the standard, uh, the, the actual standard from 1982. This design code uh, has uh, two design trucks. Uh, you can see the total wave in the slide. And uh, the distribution factors is based on a wheel factor distribution. Later, uh, an uh, update of the design code in Colombia uh, appear uh, the CCP 14. Uh, this is based on the natural earth design specifications from 2012 to 2014. And this code, uh, a big difference is that we have only uh, this one design truck with a different uh, total weight and axle weight, and the distribution factors are based on lane uh, factor distribution. Mm, regarding to the structure under study, uh, this is structure is a straight, straight uh, girder bridge with a 19 meter span and a 12.2 meter width and no, and no intermediate supports. Uh, the bridge is named the uh, Lily River Bridge um, and is designed and constructed in the early 2000s. Uh, the plans for the bridge were not obtainable. And as a major observation, uh, the diagram beams in the span are inadequate to contribute to the system, uh, to the structural system. Um, also, uh, a significant level of deterioration was evidenced in the, uh, in the beams uh, after the low test instrumentation was placed. Therefore, a uh, visual inspection was performed to determine the level of deterioration of the girders. Uh, in this activity, the length, thickness, and location of the cracks in the beam surface were acquired um, for illustrative purposes. 
Uh, in the figure, you can see uh, the deterioration level in two elements, uh, girders one and two. The, the girder two is the most uh, red element, and the other uh, beams that uh, I don't show in, in the slide uh, have um, a level of damage less uh, than the girder one. Uh, as an observation, this level of deterioration should uh, not exist in the bridge uh, since the design code or at this time uh, for, uh, using allowable stresses, uh, the allowable stressing stage has to be less than the cracking strength for the concrete uh, or equal to zero. Uh, to zero. Mm, moving uh, to the experimental test, uh, this pairs with of two types, an operational model analysis to know the frequencies and the and three static diagnose, uh, diagnostic load tests uh, in the dynamic test, uh, says, uh, six uh, seismic accelerometers uh, were used to record the vibration of the structure and the, and the uh, natural frequencies and the model stage and the damping ratio of the structures. Uh, based on this, this information, uh, a total of six model states of the structure were obtained being the first frequency of the system uh, 5.9 hertz with a model damping of approximately 3%. And with this information, uh, we perform a first calibration of the model that I show you in a, next, in a posterior slide. Mm, and science, no plans or any structural information was found. It was important to determine the possible design load of the structure. As I previously mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, the design code of 99 uh, has two design trucks and state that for a single span bridge with, two, with 28 meters or less, uh, the design load should be one of these trucks only. The lighter truck, uh, named a uh, C3295, uh, with a total weight of uh, 320 kilonewton was, op was an option depending on the importance uh, of the bridge. Um, thus, uh, based on the geometric obtained, uh, the properties of the materials of the structure and the allowable stress specific sphere in the 90 Five code, the processing force and eccentricity were estimated based on magnet diagrams. Mm, the figure show the magnet diagram, diagram for the um, uh, C3219 uh, design truck with the assumption of composite section for the serviceability stage. At this stage, the simple section was discarded because it, it didn't not meet the allowed stretch criteria from the design code. Mm, it's important to, uh, to mention that the manual diagram using the heaviest truck from the current, uh, from the code of this time uh, doesn't show an area uh, an area like uh, you can see here enclosed by the four lines uh, uh, which indicates that the section is simple or composite uh, for this uh, truck it is insufficient for this load. Uh, you can see here the property of the materials. Uh, uh, this information was obtained the, the, the directly from the code. And this is the, effect, the effective force uh, obtained. Mm, as I mentioned before, uh, this is the design truck and the uh, simple section was discarded. In addition to determining the design load and the possible space force, uh, an analysis of the critical position of the truck was carried out for the diagnostic load test. Um, this is to decide the different position of the vehicle during the static load. Uh, for this, uh, the, the, the different influence areas uh, was uh, constructed uh, for each beam uh, based on uh, on a, finite, uh, on a basis, a finite element model uh, using only the geometric survey. Uh, in this way, uh, three transverse positions were, were established as shown in the figure, uh, named uh, L1, L2, and L12. Uh, with the truck in the middle of the ridge lane uh, in each of these transverse positions. 
Mm, based uh, on the critical position analysis, uh, we also uh, propose and use a uh, instrumentation gauge uh, plan. Mm, uh, ten strength gauges were placed on the girders at the center of the bridge span. Uh, the number of, uh, of gauges was conditioned, uh, was conditioned by the project uh, budget and the existing connection system. Uh, three eight arrangements were placed to check the composite behavior uh, using experimental data. Uh, one in an interior beam, uh, one on an exterior beam, and the third one on the beam with the most damage, as you can see here in the in the slide. Um, for the proposal, for the proposal test, uh, a load truck was used with a total weight uh, equal to the 54% of the design truck, of the calculated design truck. Uh, during the test, the truck remained stopping in the specific position for 30 to 60 seconds. This in order to stabilize uh, uh, or to observe the the data was stabilized. Uh, once the truck uh, left the bridge, uh, the readings returned to their original positions as shown in this interior figure. It's only for illustrative purposes. Uh, and this, uh, the exterior figure shows the maximum deformations obtained by the testing in the, uh, in the, in the, on all the beams instrumented. Uh, based on this information, uh, as the second uh, update of the model was uh, performed, uh, complementing the updating basis of the model information. Uh, finally, uh, to talk about the finite element model, um, the model was uh, constructed and updated based on the different levels of the experiment information as mentioned before. The girders, uh, diagrams, and, sl and slab were modeled as uh, shell elements, analyzed with a template a, a formulation. Here, uh, as information, the model has a thousand nodes approximately. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Colombian specifications was used to, to obtain or to work uh, with uh, property materials, with materials of proper, uh, mat uh, property of materials, excuse me. Mm, the model was updated based on the two results, the results of OMA um, analysis and the load test results. Uh, the update using the results of the dynamic properties was performed by minimizing the object fusion pres present here, where the first, uh, the five first frequency and the model forms are compared. Uh, the modifier properties for, for, for the update uh, was the model of elasticity of the beams and the materials, the vertical stiffness of the beam bearings, and uh, as a huge change in the model, uh, the diagram, uh, diaphragm beams in the span were removed from the model and assigned as a load only. And the curve and the pedestrian platform contribute to the rigid of the structure. Um, the update uh, using the information from load test, it was performed manually uh, by modifying the stiffness of the uh, beams. Uh, in this stage, the strain obtained from the model were compared with experimental deformation at the location of the, uh, of the gauges by the e -im factor. Uh, the it's, it's important to, uh, to mention that calibration with the static load test was performed only with the L12 test, and the other tools were compared with the updated model, uh, updated model for in order to validate uh, the calibration. Uh, this is uh, the result of the strength profiles. Uh, it is observed that the basic model will with geometric survey, that's it, the model with the uh, purple dots. Um, doesn't show that with agreement, uh, approximation with experimental information. Uh, also, the model updated with model information that is uh, the, this dot, uh, this yellow dot, it doesn't show that good approximation either. And finally, uh, the updated model uh, with experimental information that includes the deterioration of the structure, here a red, a dot, a red dot a represents better the information from the log that here is in blue dots. Mm. Uh, again, uh, 
with this information of the right, uh, the, the model was calibrated and the other two information was used to validate the calibration. Uh, you can see a, a good agreement here in, in these two validate tests. Mm, with the information obtained uh, from the different models, uh, the distribution factor were cal uh, calculated and comp compared with those obtained reducing the design codes. Uh, it's, it, it is evident that the actual estimation were not in line with the results obtained from the updated model. In most cases, the estimation from the design code uh, overestimated the distribution factors. Uh, as an additional work, uh, this work is uh, we are working right now uh, with the information, uh, the moment curvature for the simple and composite section was uh, constructed. Uh, the figure uh, shows that the simple section except uh, its linear behavior for the total design uh, truck, uh, even for the uh, lightest truck. Um, uh, uh, talking about the composite section, uh, the composite section remains uh, with linear behavior, right? uh, you, even when used uh, a heavy truck. Um, this should indicate that the element does not suffer, uh, should indicate that the element does not suffer any damage in service, but the evidence in the field shows the opposite. Uh, uh, then uh, a first hypothesis states that the loss, uh, the loss in prestige force could be greater than those estimated in this work. Uh, as a conclusion, the, the structure was designed for the light truck from the Colombian code, uh, named C3295. The elements that we are not considering the initial design such curve uh, contribute to the rigid of the rigidity of the structure. The experimental terrors will indicate the null effect of the transversal beams, uh, the experimental uh, response, uh, both uh, experimental response uh, uh, from the OMA and from the uh, static test. Uh, the model information used to build the final element model was insufficient to represent the experimental strain in low test. Uh, this conclusion in order to respond to the uh, question about uh, entertaining uh, uh, because the quantity of information, is, sorry, and um, the actual estimations were not in line with experimental results as, as we see in, in previous slides. Um, and the behavior as composite section indicate that the structure should not have suffered damage in service. It's only a, we can see only a, 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 under the assumptions uh, of the original design or uh, we, uh, we need to remember that we don't have uh, any design information. And finally, as an hypothesis, first hypothesis, the losses on the presentation force could be greater than those uh, estimated. And that's all. Mm, if uh, we have time to any questions, Professor Ben. All right, thank you, Sebastian. 